there is no scapegoat anymore. And it's actually a, a feeling of freedom when you do that. We've had many CEOs, when they finally get this point, Typically, all private businesses have a very similar bottleneck. Now, there's a number of bottlenecks within businesses. It could be tens, it could be hundreds, it could even be thousands, just depending on the size of your organization. But the biggest bottleneck that we typically see within an organization starts with the CEO. So we get this question quite often, Pradeep, can you come and fix my business for me? And in simple terms, Yes, we can fix your business for you. However, there is a caveat that also includes helping you increase your skills and abilities and knowledge as a CEO. And here is the reason behind this is typically if we come in and we actually help a business, whether it's restructuring, optimizing the performance, sales, revenue, marketing, whatever it may be, and the CEO isn't at the level where they need to be to continue that growth pattern, then that business stalls. And so the analogy that I always use is you are the captain of your ship. As a CEO, you are the captain of your ship. So your ship will sail and the trajectory and the speed of your ship is completely dependent on your ability to maneuver through the environment. You can't control exactly what your entire crew is going to do, but you can maneuver the best possible way you know how. And this is the difference between a novice captain and you can say an expert or a master. And that's where you need to be as a CEO. When you become the master of your business, you are able to navigate many of those challenges and actually remove the bottleneck. You no longer really become the true bottleneck within the business. And that is a challenge because when business owners believe that the bottleneck is within the business and not taking care of their own skills, abilities, and knowledge, well, they've just pawned that responsibility, that accountability onto somebody else. Ultimately, the accountability is on you as a CEO. You are responsible for the results. And if your results aren't where you want it to be, then you have to look at yourself in the mirror and you have to identify where your gaps are and where you need to improve. And that's what we focus on. And so we've had a number of occasions where CEOs have asked us to fix the business, but they themselves have not done anything to grow their skills or abilities at all and we see that business stall. So it's actually a risk for us when we come in and we work with business owners, when they are not the ones, or the CEOs, they are not the ones that are participating in the project, the initiative, whatever it may be, the consulting agreement, whatever it may be for that particular business. If they're not engaged in there and being part of the solution, then we know that there's gonna be a bigger problem because ultimately you are the bottleneck. And I don't mean this in a negative way. I mean this in such a positive way that when you get this, it becomes that much more empowering because if you realize and you take accountability onto yourself, yes, other people need to step up the game. That's We acknowledge that. There's other th elements in your business that need to be improved. But when you take accountability, I'm talking about 100% accountability, what happens is you have complete control now. You have no longer allowed your power to be shifted to somebody else because there is no scapegoat anymore. And it's actually a, a feeling of freedom when you do that. We've had many CEOs, when they finally get this point, they have such a sense of freedom because now they realize that the more that they scale their abilities and their knowledge and, and their capabilities, the faster their business will grow, the better their business will grow. So their business is a direct reflection of them now. And so that, now they are in complete control rather than feeling like they are no that they're not in full control because other people are doing things other people are the reason for their problems other the competitors are the the reason why your business isn't doing as well as it should be doing so all of these reasons are taken away now and when you take everything away and say it's all up to me now you can actually become the master and that's what masters do they take full accountability so once you start doing that, and once you start scaling your abilities, so this is going back to 
the point that I was making, the bottleneck is truly the CEO. Once you remove that bottleneck, then you're going to see this ability of your business to scale and perform better. And knowing that you are the person that caps that, you become more engaged. You become more on fire when it comes to developing your skills as a CEO. And there's so many things that you can learn as a CEO. It's not that, hey, you've gotten to a point and all of a sudden you're the best CEO out there. Every single day is a learning experience. Even for me, every single day is a learning experience in business. Every single day I learn something new. Every single day there's a challenge that I'm faced with. Every single day there's a mistake that I make that I learn from. And that's what a real master CEO does. And so when you start taking on those challenges and you say, hmm, I'm actually getting better result of that, your business starts to scale as a result of that as well. And it's a very, very powerful place to be. So just to simplify this, the biggest bottleneck in most private businesses is the CEO is the business owner if they are the CEO. And once you realize that your skill as a CEO is directly correlated and actually leads the growth of your business, you are going to take your business to a completely different level. So I hope this helps. I wish you the very best. 